Uh, I rise in support of the demand of grant for Ministry of Education. Uh, it's overwhelming to see our union government and the Ministry of Education put, putting forward uh, the budget of this uh, uh, year uh, based on uh, uh, national education policy 2020, uh, the new education policy. I must congratulate and thank Honorable Minister for uh, outstanding leadership at the time of pandemic. Uh, the ministry did all the possible work to help the students. However, we, we, uh, we realized that despite all our efforts, despite all the efforts from union government and the ministry, there was a clear digital divide among the students. And uh, this is because that uh, we have uh, so much of disparity in the economic, uh, in the economy of our country. Uh, I'm happy to state uh, that during the budget uh, speech by Honorable Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharamanji, uh, she stated that 15,000 schools will be uh, qualitatively strengthened for national education policy. I hope that this uh, school, uh, all the schools, all the 15,000 schools and most of them will be from the rural areas of our country because uh, the implementation of national education policy is going to be a humongous task for us, not only for the government of India, but uh, the government of uh, the different states and the representatives like us. Because uh, we know that all the, uh, all the schools, uh, the primary schools, the secondary schools, and other schools in the rural areas still lack the basic facility that, uh, that is needed to implement the national education policy. Since a national education policy aims at having autonomous institutions, we have a huge uh, tax uh, at hand. At present, not more than 3% of colleges run PhD programs, and not more than 35% of colleges run PG programs. Now, if this, uh, this vision of the national education policy is to be implemented in a, a proper manner, then we should focus on upgrading colleges and those institutions which lack basic infrastructure like laboratories and libraries to, uh, so that those institutions, the colleges in the far-flung areas can also provide PhD programs and PG programs. Uh, we must also focus that these institutions get better facility for the students studying there so that once when the national education policy is implemented and when the auto autonomous uh, institution is created out of that ex existing institution that the students must not face any kind of difficulty. In Sikkim, we have upgraded the colleges to uh, run PG, uh, PG uh, courses in the existing government colleges so that when the national education policy is implemented, we can have those autonomous colleges. So we have a huge task. Implementing national education policy is not going to be easy because this is a humongous task ahead. And if this was implemented in phase-wise from the very beginning, it would have been easy. But we are coming for an education reform after three decades, more than three decades. So abruptly reforming this existing education system is not going to be easy. After decades of delaying, this government has come with the great optimism, and we appreciate that. And we, from all the states, and of course the representatives from different parliamentary constituency come ahead to support the government in implementing this new uh, national education policy. And of course, in Sikkim, we are always, uh, we are always there, uh, putting forward our students and their quality as our one, uh, one of the most uh, priority uh, agendas in our state. In higher education, I must uh, also put forward that accessibility is still an issue because the uh, gross, uh, gross enrollment ratio, the national gross enrollment ratio is 26%, whereas the gross enrollment ratio for the settled tribes is only 17.2%, which indicates that the settled tribe, the students uh, belonging to the settled tribe community, they, do, they still don't have the accessibility because all the big institutions, all the huge institutions, main institutions, they are uh, uh, in the uh, town areas, they are uh, in the cities, so that the, the, 
the students belonging to that community, they cannot come to the cities so easily. So we cannot expect them to avail it, but we must help them avail it. Vocational education, as uh, emphasized uh, in, in uh, national education policy, we must come forward with a concrete plan that how we are going to implement vocational education. Because till date, no vocational education in the schools have been implemented in proper manner. We had some vocational subjects in the schools, but those vocational subjects were uh, not implemented in a proper manner. Some subjects were in the school and they had no colleges to uh, go uh, forward. Some of the vocational subjects were in the college but were not implemented in the school. So these things have to be taken into account. Now, when I come to my parliamentary constituency, Sikkim, we are fortunate uh, that uh, we have one central university, and, and I'm uh, grateful to the Honorable Minister that he has been always helpful to bring that Sikkim Central University uh, with all the help that we have needed, we have always needed. But uh, in the context of the Northeast India, including Sikkim, I would like to stress on one point that the syllabus uh, given by the CBSC and other national level boards, they don't include the history, the culture, and the geography of the Northeastern India. So it seems that somewhere our students from the mainland India, they fail to understand uh, where the Northeastern states are and how they uh, belong to India, because uh, most of the states were later on being uh, as a full-fledged state of India in the north, uh, northeastern part of India. So this is very important that in the schools, uh, especially in the board like the CVSC, ISC, and ICSC, that the history, geography, culture, and other aspects of northeastern India also be uh, included and taught all over India so that uh, northeastern states don't feel the exclusion from the rest of the country. Now, another important I would like to uh, request the Honorable Minister through you that uh, Sikkim is a small state with just 7,096 square kilometers of area, out of which 46%, more than 45% of the area is protected area. We have Kanchanjunga National Park, one of the highest national parks in the world. Uh, this is a World Heritage Site. We have more than seven wildlife sanctuaries, and all those areas are protected. But unfortunately, we don't have institutions we don't have institutions which can provide resource in forestry, which can provide resource in wildlife, which can provide resource in natural uh, resources, medicinal plants. So I'd like to request uh, the Honorable Minister through you, Madam, that he may kindly, the government may kindly consider setting up uh, an institution, a research institution in Sikkim, which can focus not only on wildlife, uh, wildlife resources, uh, and other resources, but also on climate change, because we are there uh, uh, in the Himalayan state, and the world knows that the uh, Himalayas and the Himalayan states are the hotspot of the climate change research. Thank you, madam.